Hello, my name is Beth with Healthy Acadia and Inspire Recovery Center out of Ellsworth, Maine. I'm going to go over really quickly the signs and symptoms of an overdose and what to do if you think someone is experiencing an overdose, as well as how to administer nasal naloxone. So an overdose is a toxic amount of drugs in the body. The opioids affect the part of the brain that signal the body to breathe. So breathing can slow and eventually stop, leading to unconsciousness, coma, organ failure, and possibly death. Reverse, irreversible brain damage can start to occur in just three minutes of lack of oxygen to the brain. So some symptoms of an overdose include skin feeling clammy to the touch, face being extremely pale. Uh, there may also be a purple or a blue or even a gray hue around the lips or on the nail beds. The body can go limp, vomiting and gurgling may be occurring. Someone may be incoherent or have an inability to form words and the heart rate can speed up or slow down and a reduced or loss of consciousness can also occur in which someone, where someone becomes unresponsive. Some additional signs of overdose include seizure, chest pain, delirium, agitation, convulsions, or foaming at the mouth. The most important thing to do if you suspect that someone is experiencing an overdose is to call 911. There is no replacement for emergency medical attention and an opioid overdose is a medical emergency. So it's vital to call 911 if you think that someone is experiencing an overdose. With nasal naloxone, it's very simple to administer to somebody. So you're gonna peel the back off of the package, put one finger on each side of the plunger and you're on one side of the administrator, the thumb is gonna go on the plunger. You're going to insert into one nostril and squeeze. Next, you will either follow the instructions of the 911 operator to start to perform CPR if you are comfortable, or you're gonna roll the individual into the recovery position, which will be on the next slide. You're gonna wait for about one to two minutes if the individual is still unresponsive. You're gonna administer a second dose of naloxone into the other nostril. Being in an adrenaline situation, if you administer the second dose in less than a minute to two minutes, or if you don't administer in a different nostril, it's not going to hurt anybody. Those are just the recommended uh, steps to follow. The recovery position is rolling somebody onto their side. You're gonna tilt their head and their chin back so that their airway is open, and you're gonna bend their knee against the floor so that they're in a safe position should they uh, vomit or not be able to breathe or uh, just to make sure that they're not aspirating anything in that situation. You're going to roll somebody into the recovery position if you are uncomfortable doing CPR and in between naloxone doses if a second dose is necessary. When in doubt, naloxone, uh, naloxone's only purpose is as an opioid antagonist. So if somebody is actually experiencing a heart attack or a stroke and you confuse it with an overdose, it's not going to do any harm to that individual. It's no different than squirting water up somebody's nose if they are in fact not experiencing an overdose. That also means that it is safe on people of all ages. So um, again, if there's any question, no matter the age or the situation or the circumstance, if naloxone is available, it should be administered. It's also important to keep in mind that dangerous fentanyl Dangerous opioids such as fentanyl are being cut into more and more substances, including stimulants such as cocaine and methamphetamine. So while Narcan will not re reverse an overdose that's stimulant related, if that product is cut with fentanyl and the overdose is actually occurring because of the opioid, it can help to revive somebody and possibly save a life.